Thank you, Chair, for introducing me. Good morning. These are my disclosures. Ventilator waveforms interpretation was originally described in the 90s and 10 years later it was suggested that this should be a skill that every intensivist should possess. Uh, in, in the era of mechanical ventilators uh, able to show real-time waveforms on your screen. On waveforms, the very beginning of the patient effort can be detected as a sudden drop in airway pressure or, even better, as a sudden positive deflection of flow. On the other hand, a passive exponentially decaying flow suggests passive condition. So, we can assume that the start of exponential decay in flow uh, marks the end of a patient effort. And using this, we, we can use this information to check whether <coughs> the cycling off uh, is at the right time, too early, or delayed. Adopting a systematic method based on uh, these rules and few others, uh, after some training it's possible to detect reliably both major and minor asynchronies at the bedside. And because asynchronies uh, have different underlying mechanisms and may have different <coughs> impact on outcome, it's quite important to phenotype our patients in, according to their interaction with the ventilator. In order to identify patients at, at risk and guide treatments. For instance, early cycling is associated with a centric contraction of the diaphragm. This may be injurious for the, for the muscle. <clears throat> and may promote double triggering as well, as Elias and Jeremy uh, have uh, already shown. So this sort of bread stacking may be, of course, injurious for, for the land. So if we detect on waveforms early cycling, we can try to improve the picture for instance, changing the cycling criterion, moving from 25% of inspiratory peak value, that is the default setting, down to 5% of the inspiratory peak flow. And this is usually effective in improving the, the interaction. On the other hand, other asynchronies, such as trigger delay, late cycling, and ineffective efforts, are often associated with over assistance. And we know that high level of pressure support are very similar uh, compared to fully controlled mechanical ventilation in inducing diaphragm dysfunction and atrophy. So, if we detect on waveforms such as synchronous, we should suspect over assistance and try to decrease the pressure support level. And if over over assistance is the case, this is usually very effective in improving patient ventilator interaction without affecting gas exchanges. Interestingly enough, in this study, shortening the inspirator, mechanical inspiratory time was as well effective in improving patient ventilator interaction, probably because late cycling, a delayed opening of the expiratory valve, is so common.
during pressure support ventilation. And actually, in um, difficult to wean patients under prolonged pressure support ventilation, we observe a delayed opening of the expiratory valve in more than 50% of the breath. This is a well-known problem of pressure support ventilation that is magnified by high pressure support levels. That means that the higher the pressure support, the uh, longer the delay, and the longer the time the ventilator may be insufflating during new lung expiration, uh, especially in obstructive patients. This may lead to uh, dynamic hyperinflation and auto beep, finally leading to difficult trigger and ineffective efforts. So, if we have already optimized the pressure support level and late cycling is still present on waveforms, we can try to uh, adjust the expiratory trigger sensitivity, changing the cycling criteria, in order to superimpose the ventilator cycling flow with the patient and the inspiratory flow. Or, as an alternative, we can ask the ventilator to do this by itself, because now a waveform guided uh, automa automated cycling is available in mechanical ventilator and if you switch on this function the ventilator will open the expiratory valve as soon as this sudden change from fast to slow exponential decay of, of inspiratory flow is detected. That means that our patient is already relaxed and once that expiration begins. Uh, this function seems to be uh, effective also in restricted patients suffer suffering from early cycling, uh, such as in, in this case. So we perform a, a pilot randomized crossover study to compare the default setting of uh, expiratory trigger with the expert setting and this automation, uh, testing two le different levels of pressure support, the baseline and, and the 50% increase. But the um, expert setting that is displayed in yellow and the automation in red improved patient ventilator interaction, decreasing late cycling with automation slightly outperforming the expert setting. These flow tracing are, were recorded from one of the patients enrolled in, in the study. From top to bottom, you see the full setting, the expert setting, and the waveform guided mode. And the expert detected on waveforms ineffective efforts, late cycling, trigger delay. So he decided to um, increase the sensitivity of the, of the expiratory trigger, moving from 25 up to 40% of peak uh, inspiratory flow. And this was uh, effective in improving interaction. Anyway, phys the physician can select just a single value for the expiratory trigger sensitivity whereas the automation may adapt the cycling off to patient needs to, uh, on, on a bread by bread basis. And this is probably important, uh, especially if we consider that patient ventilator interaction may vary over time in a single patient, and even very brief clusters of asynchronous were found to be associated to, with, with poor outcome. Collateral effect of a better cycling golf in our patient was a decrease of what I call uh, volume of over assistance. So we observe uh, a, a lower tidal volume at both pressure support levels 
and an easier trigger for, for our patient. Anyway, the number of ineffective efforts was still too high, especially in the case of the hyper support level. So could, could we profit from waveforms to further improve synchronization? In the end, the, the leading cause of difficult trigger is dynamic hyperinflation. In this case, the patient therefore start when the expiratory flow is still ongoing. So we can detect, looking at waveforms, this problem, but for sure we cannot set a negative value of expiratory flow uh, as a threshold for our inspiratory trigger. So, to further improve synchronization, we have to move from thresholds to waveforms. In other words, we have to ask the ventilator to open the inspiratory valve as soon as this positive deflection of flow is uh, detected. This is a simulated COPD patient with very prolonged late cycling and some ineffective efforts. You see that when we switch on this automation, the pressure support is now delivered by the ventilator at the very beginning of the patient effort, even if flow is 10 negative. And when we increase pressure support, it seems that patient ventilator interaction is now uh, independent from the pressure support level. Again, this is quite important because this means that very weak patients with high press support requirements can be properly assisted with pressure support ventilation. Uh, nowadays, there are different, several technical solutions available on different mechanical ventilators. We bench tested these uh, ventilators and in almost all cases, there was a clear advantage, a clear, a clear decrease of asynchronous uh, with this uh, automation turn on, uh, especially for late cycling and for ineffective efforts. A clinical trial on waveform guided versus support ventilation, ventilation is ongoing. And I, I can show you some examples. This is a COPD patient with trigger delay, ineffective efforts, and clear late cycling. And you, you see that when we switch on the waveform guided press support delivery, uh, all these uh, synchronous uh, immediately and completely disappear. There is a very good uh, interaction between the patient and, and the ventilator and when we switch off, we switch back to standard uh, trigger system, all the asynchronous are uh, also back. And uh, in this restricted patient recovering from a severe ARDS, moving from uh, pressure on the left to flow to waveform guided triggering, we observe a progressive decrease of trigger delay and work of bleeding. So to conclude, bedside interpretation of standard ventilator waveforms pro provides reliable assessment of patient ventilator interaction and may help physician setting manually the, the ventilator. Anyway, because patient ventilator interaction is so variable over, over time, we cannot stay 24 hours a day bedside waiting for asynchronous to, to occur. So this is a perfect task for automation and uh, automatic waveform guided uh, triggering and cycling system are uh, very promising tool to optimize synchronization on a bright by bright basis.
Thank you for your attention.